Brother Kadash giving all praises to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Bahashim, Rakak Badash. Let me turn off this background noise. This is like an overview of Deuteronomy 33. I wouldn't even say like a breakdown of it, just an overview, just touching some, on some points, you know, while I'm reading and studying. Sometimes you read and studying, you know, sometimes you it gives you more motivation to read through a study if you just you know put together a video and and you're teaching right on the spot as you're learning on the spot too at the same time so do a minor 33 33 we're gonna go straight from the beginning it says and this is the blessing wherewith moses the man of god blessed the children of israel before his death so like that this is why i wanted to go through do the minor 33 because people don't understand what's going on you know i hear people refer to the law is the law of Moses. And then they and they say, well, that's the law that Moses gave him. Not understanding that um, that law came from the Lord. It's the law of the Lord that he gave to the children of Israel through Moses. So just like this, the blessing, you know, it was Moses, which was a man of God. What does it mean to be counted as a man of God? You see what I'm saying? And he gave the blessing um, to the children of Israel before his death. But it was the Lord that gave the blessing. It's just he used moses and that's what and that's a dynamic that people just don't understand right the lord uses men it says and he said the lord came from sinai and rose up from sair into them he shot it forth from mount paran and he came with ten thousands of saints from his right hand went a fiery law for them see so the law came from the lord but like even when the angels bring in a message from the Lord, it's still from the Lord. It's just the Lord is not going to come down directly and bring the message to you. He has sent his son. You know, if we're talking about the father, he has sent an angel. You see what I'm saying? Or he'll use a man on earth. You see what I'm saying? So this is the picture that's on your screen. It's supposedly supposed to be Mount Sinai. Right? Now let's keep going. Verse, um, no, Mount Sire. Sorry. Um, Mount Sire. So it says, yeah, he loved the people. All his saints are in thy hand. And they sat down at thy feet. Everyone shall receive of thy word. Right. And Moses commanded us a law, even an inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. But what does it mean that Moses commanded us a law? Well, where did Moses get this law? From the Lord. Let Reuben live and not die and let not his man be few. So this is going on to the tribes. Right, and this is um, a chapter just used to break down the 12 tribes. And this is the blessing of Judah. And he said, hear, Lord, the voice of Judah and bring him into his people and let his hands be significant for him um, and be thou and help to him from his enemies. Right. So the blessing of Judah. Right. Let's go to this. He said, hear, Lord, voice of Judah um, and bring him into his people. Right. Because. Judah plays a very important role amongst Israel, which, you know, Judah is at the top of Israel, the leaders of Israel. So we broke this down at camp. Let me see what I'm on looking for. We broke this down at, um, at camp, um, and it's called the tribe of Judah, and it was going on of the different positions of the tribes but more more so the um what position does judah play all right so this is isaiah 11 just straight to verse 13 it says the envy also of ephraim should depart in the adversaries of judah so this is the same thing that's talking about Deuteronomy 33 it says the enemies of judah that which is the adversaries of judah shall be cut off but the adversaries of Judah is going to be cut off by what? Which is really the so-called white man is the biggest one. So you say the Edomites. But they're going to be cut off when all the tribes come together and we have our brothers to help us. When we have Ephraim, when we have um, Issachar, when we have Gad, you know, Levi to help us. And we come together as a power. So it's, it's, it's they put it in movies, you know. It's like affinity rings. You got to put them all together, you know, but you got to get all the tribes together. And that's what the Lord's going to do. And you say, you may say, man, we don't see that happening on earth right now. When is that going to happen? Y'all been saying that for years. The thing is, is, and then you don't even see it happening in the future. You don't, you don't see nothing leading to us all coming together. But the thing is, is that the Lord could pour out his spirit when he wants to. 
and then it'd be a m miraculous change. So it's going to look like, oh, we're over as a people. We're never going to come together. We're never going to get that spirit of the Lord. And then randomly it's going to happen. That's how you're going to know it's from the Lord, you know. It says, um, uh, Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. So that's really a representative of the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. No longer is going to be separated, going to be made one. Right, now let's go back and do a monarchy 33. Verse 8. And of Levi he said, Let thy coming and thy Aram be with the Holy One who thou didst prove at Massa, and with whom thou didst strive at the waters of Miriam. It says, Who said unto his father and his mother, I have not seen him, neither did he knowledge his brethren, nor knew his own children. For they have observed the word and kept the covenant, right? Because even going back to um, Levi in the wilderness, you know, they had, um, when they had came down to who would stand for the Lord, you know, Levi was the ones that stood up for the Lord. So they, they play a special role too, you know, um, especially as being a priest and stuff like that. Right now, let's keep going on. Um, verse 10, they shall teach Jacob thy judgments. In Israel, thy law, they shall put incense before thee in the whole burnt sacrifice upon thy altar, right? Because Levi is the ones that's supposed to do what? Teach the law, right? So they're going to teach Jacob the judgment and the law. That's what they're really big big on, teaching you what the law is. A, a um, what to do if two men try together and the wife jumps in. What to do um, in an adultery case. What to do if a man is afraid to go to war. What to do if a man just got a family and and um, a wife and children, but war is coming up. What to do if um if you got a disobedient son? I mean, you know, these are all going to all the laws. Just just some that just popped up ahead, right? Um, so let's keep going. Bless the Lord His substance and uh, accept the work of His hands. Smite through the loins of them that rise against Him, and of them that hate Him, that they rise not again. And of Benjamin, He said. The beloved of the Lord should dwell in safety by him, and the Lord should cover him all the day long, and he shall dwell between his shoulders. And of Joseph he said, Blessed of the Lord be his land, for the precious things of heaven, for the dew and for the deep that cultures beneath, and for the precious fruits brought forth by the sun, and for the precious things put forth by the moon and for the chief things of the ancient mountains right which this is an ancient supposedly supposed to be an ancient mountain on your screen and for the precious things of the lasting hills and for the precious things of the earth and fullness thereof and for the good will of him that dwell in the bush let the blessing come upon the head of joseph and upon the top of the head of him that um was separated from his brother right Right, and these, and this goes back, let me pull this precept, I'm looking for this precept. This all goes back to this right here. Which is Genesis 27, verse um, 20. Verse 28, straight to the point. Therefore, God give thee the dew of heaven, the fatness of earth, plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee, and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren, and let thy mother's sons bow down unto, to thee. Cursed be everyone that cursed thee, and blessed be everyone that blessed thee. This is what was given to Jacob. That was a blessing that was given to Jacob, right? Now let's go back to Deuteronomy 33. We're going to go to verse 17. And his glory is like the first things of the bullock, and the horns are like the horns of unicorns. With them he shall push the people together to the ends of the earth. And they are the ten thousands of Ephraim, and they are the thousands of Manasseh. And of Zebulon he said, Rejoice, Zebulon, in thy going out in Issachar in thy tents. They shall call the people into the mountain, right? There shall there they shall offer sacrifices of righteousness, for
for they shall suck on the abundance of the seas and of the treasures hid in the sands, right? Because what's going to happen is her gates are going to be open. It speaks about this in Isaiah 61. It speaks about this in Revelation 21, right? How in, in Isaiah 60, it speaks about how our gates are going to be open continuously so the other nations could bring all the riches, which really belongs to us. They're going to be bringing it back to us, right? In the abundance of the people, because who was the seeds and revelations? It's the people, the waters, it's the people, right? The abundance of the things they got, they're going to be bringing it back to us because there's going to be a new rulership on earth, right? Um, let's keep going. Verse 20, and of God he said, Blessed be he that enlargeth God. He dwelleth as a lion and teareth the arm with um, the crown of the head. Then they go into deep breakdowns, the breakdown of 12 tribes, start using these, right? Um, which people don't understand, like, look, man, we nobody's saying that, okay, this, because of this, says this, and this matches up with them, that's our proof that, okay, Issachar, because Issachar works hard, and the Bible talks about labor, and, and with Issachar, and the Mexicans work hard, that means that they're Issachar. Nobody's saying that what we're doing is we're giving you pieces of a puzzle, and when you put those pieces of the puzzle together and you finish it, what do you get? You get the full picture. And then some things are meant to be understood in the spirit. Right now, let's keep going because that's what is going on with all the tribes. And he provided the first part for them, for, for himself, because they're in a portion of the lawgiver he, was he t seated. And he came with the heads of the people and executed the justice of the Lord in his judgment with Israel. And of Dan, he said, Dan is a lion's whelp. We know Judah is also a lion's whelp. He shall leap from Bashan. And of Natali, he said, O Natali, satisfied with favor and full with the blessings of the Lord, poses thou the west and the south. And of Ashar, he said, let Ashar be blessed with children. Let him be acceptable to his brethren and let him dip his foot in oil. Right? So, so like, sanctified. Right? It says, thy shoe shall be iron and in brass. And as thy days, so shall thy strength be. There is none like unto God of um, Jeshurun. Who rideth upon the heaven in thy help in, in his ecstasy of the sky. Now you got them over there in Saudi Arabia walking around calling the dude um, his ecstasy, which is crazy, right? The internal God is the refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms, and he should thrust out the enemy from before thee and shall say, destroy them. So, like, this is the thing, right? Like, and it's crazy. Everybody on earth, they get to high positions and then they think they're the Lord. And then they start giving themselves titles that the Lord go by and stuff like that. And, and it just shows you how bad everybody on earth, whether these other nations um, or whatever, how bad they want to be the Lord or be the Lord's people or, or have the power that the Lord got. And, and they're not going to get it. But verse 27 is important because it says, thrust out the enemy. You don't say wait, save the enemy and combine the enemy with Israel and then they become Israelites or the Lord is going to save all nations and, and mix them up one together. No, the Lord is going to thrust out our enemy. So if we are the Israelites, well, we know who happened to us and we know who fits the number one leader to be our enemies on earth, right? The so-called white man. Um, the Lord said he's going to thrust out our enemies before us, not save them with us in the kingdom. It says, and should destroy them, which goes into Obadiah 1. That's how they're going to get destroyed. Verse 28, Israel then should dwell in safety alone. No, Israel should be combined and mixed with all other nations together. And um, and then they should become one. No, it says Israel should be in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also, his heavens should drop down dew. Happy are thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord. Because that's who's going to get salvation. Who is that, O Israel? The shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy ecstasy? 
and thy enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon the high places, right? Because it's going to come true of who Israel is, who salvation is for. All that stuff is going to be revealed in due time. And then it's going to be found out that our enemies are the liars. They're the ones lying, saying they're all us. They're the ones lying, saying that they could be saved. They're the ones lying, saying that they're Christians and they, they, that they follow the Lord when they're really not. So all these things are going to be revealed. You know, it's just, remember, I put up a video about patience because one of the biggest things in this truth is being patient. That's one of the biggest and hardest um, things to do. In this truth of ours is be patient. You know, I've seen a lot of men walk walk away from this because they ran out of patience. They got tired of waiting. They was on fire. You know, they had that spirit on them. They had the eye of the tiger, you would say, right? At one point of time, but as time goes by, you know, people get in it for the wrong reasons. You know, they get in it because they want to be liked by men, but when men stop liking you, they fall off. They get in it because they want to be known by a brotherhood and known by men and stuff like that but when that starts to wear off then they start to lose their faith so if you the only if you're in the truth the only reason why you should be in truth because the faith that you got in the lord anything other than that eventually gonna get you to fall off man and that's the hardest thing is being patient it's to continue going even when a year go by, even when two years go by, three years, four years, five years, six years, seven years go by, you know, you're still going in the truth because you're going to finish your course no matter what, you know. And then some man, you got to imagine some man came in the truth in their 20s and they in their 60s for the 40 year span and the end still hasn't came. And that's a very hard thing, you know, to a hard pill to swallow. Now, this is Ezekiel. Um. 37 of course which is which is um very important verse 22 and i would make the one nation because that's what deuteronomy 30 33 is talking about and deuteronomy 30 speaks on it too in the land upon um the mountains of israel that's who this is talking about prophecy kingdom talk and one king shall be king to them all and they shall be no more two mountains, neither shall they be divided into the two kingdoms anymore at all. Neither shall they defile themselves anymore with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places wherein they sent. So this this is what Deuteronomy De 33 just got them talking about. They, they should dwell alone. Now watch this. And will cleanse them, so shall my people so shall they be my people, and I will be their God. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. Then they say, you're going to put a king over them. And they shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in, thy, in my judgments and observe my statutes and to do them. And our king in, in um, the kingdom is going to be Yahweh Shai. He's the offspring of David. That's who's going to be set up as our king and our one shepherd. It says, and they shall dwell in the land that I have given into Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt. And they shall dwell there, and even they and their children and their children's children. So why is it talking about children? That's an offspring. That's sperm. Right? That's, that's genealogy. Right? It says, in my servant David, which tells you that it's a people. That's being chosen, not just anybody, and that's gonna be called Israel a title. No, it's a bloodline. My servant David, which is the Bible tells you, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. My servant David shall be their prince forever. Now you say, okay, well David gonna be there? He gonna be a prince, right? And but it just depend on the perspective you're looking at it. So if you're under David then you're you're looking up to him some people will say well he's your king and then yahweh shai is king over david in the kingdom i will say um david is a prince yahweh shai is the king of the um kingdom and then um you're gonna have princes but you know just like in in the ancient kingdom you know a prince still has power over you a prince is still above you if let's just say you're you're a regular man in the kingdom the prince is still above you it's just the king is above the prince you know, so sometimes they call King David king, sometimes call him prince, you know, but our king and our one shepherd, the top that's going to sit on the top is Yahweh Shai. We all agree to that. 
right? Um, verse 26, moreover, I will make a covenant with peace with them, and there should be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forever, forevermore. My, tab my tabernacle also shall be with them. Yeah, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And the heathen, the other people, which the enemies that the Lord said he's going to get rid of, shall know that I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel. So they're liars. But the truth is going to come out, and the Lord is going to say, look, now you know that I chose Israel. When my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. So then they're going to be found to be liars. So that I'm going to say salvation to be like Shalom.